Welcome to the Shutter. This is a collection of viewer submissions and they're all great stories, UFO experiences. Now I'm working on more longer videos of Bigfoot encounters and some dogman and ghost stories with similar criteria and uh, just to kind of keep it uniform and uh, those will be coming soon. Okay, fluff up that Pompasan chair you got in college and settle in. It was the summer of 1967, and I was 10 years old. It was late afternoon, and I was at my grandmother's house. My grandmother, two uncles, my aunt, my younger sister, and I were watching TV. My grandmother was doing laundry, and back in those days, you hung the clothes on the line to dry. She had gotten up to bring in the clothes, when all of a sudden, she came running in from the back door, saying, come outside and look at this. We all ran out to the backyard and walked over to the clothesline where she pointed up at the sky. About half a block down the alley near the electrical pole was what I can only say was a UFO. It made no noise. It just hung there in the sky a few feet above the pole. It was the size of a Volkswagen and was a unique color of metal gray. No windows that I could see no sound, no movement. My grandmother turned and looked at us and asked, what is that? We looked at her, then back at the UFO, but it was gone. It just disappeared. We never saw it again. Out of the six people that witnessed this event, three of us are still alive. We still talk about it whenever we're together. I grew up in a small coal town in southwestern Pennsylvania. I was the second child out of four girls who were born one year after the other. I shared my bedroom with my favorite sister and best friend Cherie throughout my life. We were born in the late 50s. Nothing much exciting ever happened in our town except the occasional story of the weird people that lived in the corner house across the tracks. In the summertime, Mom would kick us out of the house to play in our yard all day while she did what moms back then typically did. My mom had a ringer washer and she would hang clothes out on the line to dry. She'd be in there all day washing clothes, ironing, mopping floors, and cooking dinner while Dad worked as much as possible to support four growing girls. While Mom did all her housework, we'd play Mother May I or Hide and Go Seek, or sometimes Mom would give us her old high-heeled church shoes and we'd clomp up and down the sidewalks pretending to be grown-ups. We loved that so much. Mom would give us old clothes to make Barbie clothes out of, and we'd do our best to cut out arms and legs and safety pin them together into something we fancied to be ball gowns. Because mom worked so hard and was so young to have four girls, she got pretty stressed out. She'd make us go to bed at early hours. 7.30 p.m. on a summer night was no fun to kids when all the other kids would still be outside playing. On weekends sometimes, our parents had their best friends come over to play pinochle till all hours of the night. We'd listen to them down there chugging Pepsi and laughing and smoking cigarettes till 3.30 a.m. sometimes. One night, I was lying in my single bed. My bed was only about three feet from the window, which had an old-fashioned screen you just put in and closed the window down on it. There was no breeze or fan for us, so we lay there roasting our butts off in that heat. One night, around midnight, I'm guessing, my sister said she had to go to the bathroom. So she went in, and I was laying there, staring at the window, wishing for a small breeze. Our house was surrounded by three other houses, pretty close together, so no lights from cars or anything else ever shone in that window. As I lay there, waiting for my sister to get back, all of a sudden, this oval-shaped, brightly lit-up disc went slowly drifting past my window. 
I was just maybe nine years old, so I have no idea how big it was. All I know is it was so close that it lit up my entire room so bright that you'd think a stadium light did it. I was paralyzed with fear. I couldn't move for a few seconds. Finally, I got the nerve to get up and look outside the window to see if I could spot it, but no luck. Whatever it was had come and gone. When Cherie came back to the room, I told her what happened. Then I ran downstairs to tell my parents, who said it was probably the Tooth Fairy. Ha! Huh. I was so mad they would brush it off so lightly like it was no big deal. It was the scariest thing that ever happened to me in my younger years. It made such an impression that to this day I wonder what the heck it could have been. I heard a couple of days later that a boy a year older than me had seen it too, and he did his science report on it. It was hanging on the bulletin board in the hallway at school with a brightly written red A on it. I was just so happy that someone else had seen it and that I wasn't crazy after all. This may be no big deal to anyone else, but it scared me so bad I remember it to this day very clearly. This was an ongoing encounter that went on for a month or two. This happened around 1994 in the Midwest. I work nights doing custodial work. I am a person who notices little things out of the ordinary that most people ignore or disregard as no big deal. My family lived in the country. It wasn't all that remote, just the rural part of a small town. When I arrived home and got out of my car, I started noticing these lights in the sky. They seemed lower and brighter than the other stars and much closer. It was a bright white light, but also saw blue and red flashes with pulsating lights. The light didn't move across the sky like an airplane, or I would have just assumed it was that and moved on. There were at least two, sometimes up to four of them, spaced out in different directions. The light seemed to be observing. I have also noticed them moving in closer, like zooming in on my location. I would see them every night in about the same location. They would remain in the same spot for hours, then drift away slowly, but sometimes it was as if they just shut the light off. Stars don't do that. I began noticing this the moment I pulled into the driveway when coming home from work. I saw them in the sky all the way home. We had an outdoor barn light on a pole in the backyard, like you would see on farms out in the country. The backyard light would get brighter like someone was turning up the intensity slowly. I noticed that if a car went down the road, the light would gradually dim back to normal. Then, when the car was gone, the light would gradually intensify again. The barn light would be so bright that it looked almost like early morning right before the sun came up, but this was still 1.30 a.m. I went inside, and every lamp or electronic, the stereo, the numbers on the digital alarm clock, anything with a light got more intense, just like the barn light, then slowly go back down to normal. The light became more intense, then would dim. The lights would all be in sync, doing this at the same time. I would also get an uneasy feeling while this went on. This happened for several weeks, possibly a month. I felt like whatever was causing this was waiting for me to come home. One night, I waited in my car, sunk down, watching the lights get intense, then dim again. Totally freaked out. I waited for the lights to dim because of a car going up the road. I ran for the house and hid behind the recliner for a few hours. I did this several nights. Of course, no one else in the house saw anything and thought I was losing it. I was no longer curious as to what was causing this. I just wanted it to go away. I would come home, walk in, and turn off the lamp. They left a lamp on for me to find my way through the house. 
I felt like someone or something was looking for me. Yes, paranoia seemed to set in a bit. During this time, I also had trouble sleeping and several times had sleep paralysis. I'd be in that state between sleep and awake and feel paralyzed. The only thing I could move were my eyes. I didn't see a thing, but I felt this terrible dread and uneasiness come over me. I couldn't speak, like my tongue was numb or something, but eventually I was able to force a word out. When I forced the name of Jesus out, it would stop. I really didn't remember any of it at the time. The next morning, I went on with my day. In fact, I didn't remember it until I watched videos years later of others mentioning the sleep paralysis and it triggered the memory. The light show seemed to escalate. One night, while making my way to my bedroom in the dark, I walked past the door to my parents' room, which was open. I saw what looked like searchlights, the kind of searchlights with the extremely bright white light like you see on a police helicopter searching for someone on the ground. It was shining the light back and forth across the driveway and the yard and even shined through the window. In between lights, I crept past in the dark to my room, crawling on the floor on my belly. There was no helicopter outside. I didn't hear the propeller swooshing or the motor of a helicopter or anything. There was only a low rumble that went on all night. The only thing I can compare it to is when your air conditioner kicks on or a fan, but a deeper, heavier sound you could feel the vibration from. I hid in my bed till I eventually fell asleep. That next morning, I asked my family members how they all slept through all that noise and lights. They never heard a thing and slept through all of it. After they all left for work, I could still hear the low rumble. Whatever it was finally left and it got a little louder as it went away. The rumbling sound seemed to be above the clouds. I saw nothing outside, but I had the TV turned to the morning news. While watching out the screen door, the TV turned off. That was it. I was totally freaked out and drove to my boyfriend's apartment. That weekend, while hanging out with my boyfriend, I swore I still heard the low rumble above the clouds, over his apartment, like it had followed me. He lived about 30 minutes away in a nearby town. I was a basket case for a while. One morning, my mother got up and found me crouched behind the recliner chair, hiding from the lights. Eventually, I had to start ignoring the blinking lights in the sky, or I was going to be committed, I have no doubt. I just started going inside when I got home, not looking up and straight to bed or doing sit-ups until I was so exhausted I had to sleep. I was only getting about three hours of sleep a night. On a good night, I'd get five. Thankfully, there was no abduction or creepy beings. I prayed every time I saw the light anomalies. My boyfriend, now husband, flipped one off from his car while driving and it literally shut off. We both saw that. Even now, I still notice the blinking lights every now and then, but just ignore them and go back inside, especially if I see them zoom in closer. Today, I live in a different state. I decided it's not just me they're watching and observing. They're waiting for someone to notice them. I don't know what to call them. UFO? It was definitely an unidentified object in the sky. Yeah, Tony, I think I'd be pretty freaked out by that myself. Um, I want to thank Tina, Teresa, and Tony for sending those in. Uh, I've never seen a UFO myself, at least nothing that I didn't believe to be a plane or a helicopter. Um, I can't imagine any of these experiences being either of those. But anyway, thank you for listening, and if you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so you can join me here next time for The Shutter.